Hello everyone. Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about recursion in programming. In today's video, we have an interesting quiz for you guys. So stay tuned and do leave your answers for the quiz that's going to pop up on your screens in next few minutes. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological advancements, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We'll start this session by understanding what is recursion. Followed by that, we'll find out how recursion gets executed in memory area. Once done with that, we'll look into different types of recursion. And finally, we'll implement a program that demonstrate the concept of recursion. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with our first topic, what is recursion? Well, recursion is a process in which a function repeatedly calls itself either directly or indirectly. Those calls are majorly done by explicitly calling function by its name. However, it can also be accomplished by implicit calling as well. The fundamental idea behind calling the function over and over again is to break a larger problem into smaller sub-problems. We do this for reducing the computational complexity of a larger problem by breaking it into several pieces. This tactic is also called as divide and conquer approach in programming. So now you must be thinking about how we can break the larger problem into smaller sub-problems. Well, to do that, we break the given problem statement into two parts. The first one is base case and the second one is recursive step. The base case is nothing but the simplest instance of a problem that consists of condition which holds the recursive function. Given the function calls argument, this base case computes the output of our program right away. Whereas in the recursive step, we compute the result using one or more recursive calls to the same function but with the inputs decrease in size or complexity. To understand this breakdown, let's have a look at mathematical aspect of recursion. Suppose you have to formulate a mathematical function for computing the sum of n natural numbers. That means the function that you are going to create must calculate the summation of all natural numbers in the range 0 to n. Mathematically, it can be represented as summation of all numbers from k is equal to 0 to k is equal to n. Now the critical question here is, how can we actually represent this in form of recursive function? The answer is quite simple. All we need to do is break this larger problem into small fragments. We can represent this problem as n plus sum of all natural numbers till n minus 1. This process of traversing in function f n minus 1 times is called the recursive step of our problem statement. Whereas, the base case is a condition which is stopping the recursion when k is reaching value 0. In terms of programming, it can be represented using a block. Now I hope you guys have understood how we can break a larger problem into smaller sub-problems. Moving further, we are going to understand how recursion gets executed in memory area. In order to do that, we'll take this C program as an example. In this program, we have two methods. The main method contains one variable and the statement that invokes a function named fun. This function fun is making a recursive call in its function body. We have both base case and recursive step inside this function's body. Now, whenever a function is called, its activation record will be maintained inside the stack. So, for this program, we are going to look into its control flow. As we know, the main function gets invoked primarily by an operating system. Thus, we'll include the main function at first in our memory stack. This activation record will consist of local variables of function, parameters and the record of return address to the caller. But here, for the sake of simplicity, we are just maintaining the local variables inside the activation record. After this step, as you can see, the main function is activating method fun with argument 3. Once activated, it will prompt 3 on screen and will invoke fun 3 minus 1, that is fun 2. Now again, as 2 is greater than 0, the control will invoke fun 2 minus 1, that is 
fun one after this the control will activate fun zero this time once the control enters an if block it will execute a return statement and activation record zero will get popped out of the memory stack further every function inside the memory stack will get popped out from it which will result in generation of output the output that will get printed on the console for this particular program is 3 2 1 now here is the interesting question that we want you all to answer based on the properties of recursion that we have discussed till now which of the following statement seems right to you the options that we have are recursion is always better than iteration option b recursion uses more memory compared to the iteration option c recursion uses less memory compared to the iteration it will be interesting to see how many of you guys will get this right so guys do leave your answers to this question in comment section below in a week's time we'll be announcing the right answer and you all can check it out now moving ahead we'll discuss different types of recursion in programming there are basically four types of recursion the first one is direct recursion the second one is indirect recursion. The third one is tail recursion and the fourth one is non-tail recursion. So let's discuss direct recursion. A function is called direct recursive if it calls itself in its function body over and over again. To better understand this definition, let's look at the structure of a program that is direct recursive in nature. In this program, we have a method named fun which is calling itself again and again in its function body. Thus, we can say that it is direct recursive in nature. Next up is indirect recursion. The recursion in which the function calls itself via another function is called as indirect recursion. For example, in this program you can clearly see that the function fun1 is explicitly calling fun2 which is invoking fun1 again explicitly. Hence, we can say that this is an example of indirect recursion. Further, we have tail recursion. A recursive function is said to be tail recursive if the recursive call is the last execution done by the function. Let's try to understand this definition with the help of an example. If you observe this program, you can see that the last line ADI will execute for method fun is recursive call and because of that, there is no need to remember any previous state of our program. Finally, we have a non-tail recursive function on our list. A recursive function is said to be non-tail recursive if the recursion call is not the last thing done by the function. After returning back, there is something left to evaluate. Let's consider one example. In this function, you can clearly observe that there is another operation after the recursive call. Hence, our ADI will have to memorize the previous state inside this memory block. That is why, this program can be considered as non-tail recursive. Now finally, let's implement a program to demonstrate the recursion. The program that we are going to implement is solution to the problem statement that we discussed earlier. According to that problem statement, we have to calculate the sum of n natural numbers given the number n. Now in order to address this problem, we are going to use C programming language. So without any further ado, let's head over to the code editor. Now in order to get started with coding implementation, first we'll create an utility function to calculate sum of n natural numbers. So let's do that and we'll pass an argument int n. Now we have arrived inside the body of function sum. What we'll first do is we'll calculate sum of n minus 1 natural numbers by making a recursive call to function sum. So let's do that sum n minus 1 and we'll store this value inside a temporary variable. Now we'll add this temporary variable's value to n in order to return it as a result. The statements that we just wrote are called as recursive steps. But if you observe this statement, we are not putting any limitation to our recursive call. So that is why we'll have to add base case to our function. So let's do that. F 
n equal to equal to 0 then return 0. With this we have successfully implemented a sum function. So let's work on our driver method to generate the result. In this driver method first we'll create a variable n and after that we'll write a printf statement enter the natural number n to calculate the sum of n numbers semicolon and in next line we'll write scanf statement in order to take input from our user so inside this we'll write modulus d comma ambras in n and semicolon and in next statement we'll make a call to our sum function in order to calculate sum of n natural numbers so how we can do that well we can add modulus d here comma sum n semicolon and i hope our code works fine now so let's check it by compiling here the console is asking us to provide with value of variable n and i'm going to provide value 5 here so let's provide value 5 and enter so the output that we are getting is 15 here that means our code works fine with this successful coding implementation we came to the end of this video i hope that you guys have understood how recursion works now in the upcoming sessions we'll discuss some advanced problems of recursion so if you have any doubts about the concept covered in this video then let us know in comment section below and we'll surely help you get them resolved thank you so much for being here and do watch out for more videos from simply learn hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified, click here.